Hello, everyone. My name is Dong Chen. I'm an engineer on Android. I'm going to share the latest on Android machine learning and show you how you can benefit from our newest offerings. Machine learning continues to enable new user experience across vision, speech, and language tasks. With the increasingly powerful mobile devices, we see tremendous growth in processing happening on device. On-device machine learning has some unique benefits over server-based ML, such as improved latency, minimized exposure to user's private data, reduced power consumption, and the ability to provide a consistent experience even with no network connectivity. In addition, it can also save server costs. Many of the latest features on Pixel 6 are enabled with on-device machine learning. For example, Magic Eraser in Google Photos that's easily remove distractions, such as an accidental photobomb. Powered by on-device instance segmentation ML technology, Magic Eraser can detect distractions in the photo and then again use machine learning to predict what it would look like if the distraction weren't there. Another great example is the Pixel 6 Direct My Call. When you call a business, it can help transcribe the call in real time and present you with the call menu options saving you the hassle of remembering which option to press. These features all run on device. If you want to benefit from on device machine learning in your own Android apps, there are two great options. First is MLKit. MLKit is a great starting point because it provides ready-made solutions through simple APIs for ML-powered features like real-time post detection, offline translation, and digital ink handwriting recognition, all optimized to run on mobile devices. The best part is, you don't need any machine learning expertise to use MLKit. If you do have some ML expertise, and either your use case is not covered by MLKit, or you need more control over the experience, you can go custom. In order to help with this, Android provides a custom ML stack which consists of a set of supporting components that make it easier to deploy custom ML. This year, we have exciting updates on both MLKit and the supporting components provided by Android. Let's start with MLKit. Since launching in 2018, MLKit has been growing rapidly. Combining Android and iOS, its usage has more than doubled since last year to over 1 billion monthly active users and 80,000 monthly active apps. Over the past year, we have been making major updates across our existing APIs, improving accuracy, latency, and SDK size. First of all, we push the limit of performance through hardware acceleration. By enabling GPU acceleration for post-detection, we reduced the pipeline latency by up to 43% based on internal benchmarking. On Pixel 6, we also enable TPU acceleration for object detection and tracking, as well as post-detection and reduced their pipeline latencies by as much as 28% and 50%, respectively. Additionally, we enable DSP acceleration for object detection and tracking on qualified devices. It sped up model inference by three times while consuming only one-seventh of energy based on our internal benchmarking. We also made some big updates to text recognition with a beta version of Text Recognition V2. In addition to the Latin script, we added support for Chinese, Devanagari, Japanese, and Korean scripts, dramatically expanding our language coverage. We introduced a deep paragraphing technology to provide better structural grouping. We also added the support for text written in all orientations. And even with all these improvements, we managed to boost recognition accuracy and improve latency by as much as 30% on Android devices. Thanks to the new script support, Text Recognition V2 Beta can now cover 37 languages, representing over 4.9 billion people worldwide. On top of these improvements, we looked for ways to make it easier to integrate MLKit into your app. The new Google Code Scanner API, powered by Google Play Services, utilizes the latest MLKit scanning technology. Using this API, Apps can request that Google scans the barcode, QR code, and other codes on their behalf, 
and returns the result without needing to request a camera permission or process the image within the app. This makes it quicker and easier to integrate code scanning features into your app while reducing users' concern about having to grant camera permissions that can limit feature usage. Finally, I want to let you know that MLKit has an ongoing early access program. This can be a great opportunity to find out about upcoming MLKit APIs, or even influence their design by partnering with our engineering team. You can apply by following the link on the screen. Now, you may have a use case that is not yet supported by MLKit, or maybe you need more advanced control in deploying your own custom ML models. Last year, we announced a set of supporting components to make this easier. I want to hand it over to Ali to talk about the latest updates on those. Thank you, Dong. Hi, I'm Ali, a product manager in Android. I'm going to talk about Android's custom ML stack, which consists of a set of supporting components that make deploying custom ML easier. As a recap, last year, we highlighted three areas where Android's custom ML stack would deliver significant improvements. First, making essential components for running on-device inference built in so that you don't need to bundle them into your app separately, starting with TensorFlow Lite. And second, helping you get optimal performance across the ecosystem by using hardware acceleration wherever available. And third, providing regular updates to hardware drivers outside of Android dessert releases with consistent support across OS versions. I'm proud to say that we made great progress in all of these areas. Let's start with the essentials. Last year, we announced the Play Services API for TensorFlow Lite. This API is now publicly available in beta. By switching over to this API for inference, you can immediately shave off up to 2 megabytes from your app size. Moreover, your app is likely to benefit from regular performance improvements. This is because the TF Lite team keeps optimizing performance in their latest releases, and these improvements will be picked up and delivered by Google Play services automatically. In fact, during our early access program last year, some teams have observed as much as 20% performance improvement in CPU by migrating to the new Play Services API. TensorFlow Lite in Google Play services is already being used by Google Teams, including MLKit, and serving over 400 million monthly active users, running over 20 billion daily inferences. If you're interested in adopting, the API is almost the same as regular TensorFlow Lite. In most scenarios, we expect migration to involve making minor code changes, such as adding an initialization call and waiting for it to be completed. You can see that we use the suspending function here. This is a cool Kotlin feature that allows writing sequential code without blocking the UI thread. And once initialized, you can run inference as usual. And that's it. You can get started with this API today by following the link below. And now comes my favorite part, performance and hardware acceleration. Mobile devices nowadays are armed with powerful chips that can provide up to 10x latency improvement for ML inference. However, it has been hard to benefit from these capabilities due to variations in runtime latency, stability, and even accuracy across different devices and driver versions. I'm excited to announce Acceleration Service, a new API that will dramatically improve the experience for you. This API uses a technology called local benchmarking that helps determine optimal hardware on which to run ML inference safely at runtime. This technology is already used for post-detection ML kit, where it helped make it up to 43% faster. Acceleration service is currently in early access preview, and you can apply by following the link below. And here's how local benchmarking works. At runtime, you call into acceleration service with your ML model and a few golden samples. The service then spins up new processes for testing each different hardware available. Running them at separate processes ensures your app doesn't suffer from driver stability issues, such as crashes or hangs. And after benchmarking is completed, you get a report on latency, stability, and accuracy of different accelerators. You can then choose the accelerator you want based on your business needs. And here's another cool part. The more devices you use this technology on, the better it gets as it collects telemetry and automates some of the decision-making 
on the cloud. And by the way, you have control over when to run these local benchmarks. For example, you can choose to complete all of it in the app initialization time and get it cached. This way, your app will be ready to benefit from performance at future execution time. Now, earlier we talked about how we made TensorFlow updatable with Google Play services in order to enable you to get access to the latest optimized inference engine. But getting the best performance also requires access to the latest optimized hardware drivers. This is why last year we announced Updatable Neural Networks API, which is now live in production under private beta. And this year, we're starting to make additional TensorFlow Lite delegates updatable as well with Play services. This means you will get access to the latest drivers and delegates without having to bundle them into your app. You can benefit from updatable drivers using the acceleration service or target them directly. To find out more, please follow the link on the slide. Let's put it all together for Android's custom ML stack. TensorFlow Lite in Google Play services is now publicly available in beta for use. It will help you save on binary size and benefit from regular performance improvements. Acceleration Service is accepting applications to the early access preview. It will allow you to benefit from hardware acceleration without having to worry about latency, stability, and accuracy variations in user devices. Updatable hardware drivers are starting to roll out with Neural Networks API in private beta. Soon, we will be making additional TensorFlow Lite delegates updatable as well, so that you can benefit from the latest optimized drivers and delegates seamlessly. You can access all of these APIs by following the link on the slide. Finally, we want to acknowledge that ML can be challenging. This is why the Android ML team is planning to do one-to-one -one office hours with Android developers who are actively working on an on-device machine learning related project for their apps. This can be a great opportunity to get direct help from Googlers about APIs, hardware acceleration, model conversions, and anything on-device machine learning related. You can apply by following the link below. I want to thank you on behalf of Dong, myself, and the Android ML team. We have links on the screen which will lead you to everything we announced today and our latest early access programs. You can also find them in the video description. Thank you for watching.